So and everyone tuning in uh, over YouTube later on, um, sorry for starting the recording late. We've just been going over team updates and Dragonberry updates. Um, the Dragonberry update is we're going to post a postmortem within a week or two, um, but all patches have been released. And if you've updated to 046.6 or 045.9, you are safe. Um, sweet. So let's kick it off with storage, if there are no questions. Amazing. Um, so a short update on IVL is um, the IVL ADR has been updated. So I invite everyone to um, to go review it again. The changes have been, um, there's been a bit more changes to the ADR. So first the initial one was a global nonce. Um, and then now it is uh, the proposed solution from Dave and uh, Roman from Osmosis um, to be a version with a suffix of um, the path in the tree. The other changes to IVL will be that currently in the SDK, we have pruning where you can choose a height to remain in um, in the store. So this is if you if you know the pruning settings, you have um, a keep every setting. So meaning that you will prune, let's say, a hundred blocks every thousand, but you're going to keep every you're going to prune ninety nine blocks um, every hundred blocks, but you're going to keep block one hundred in state. Um, and so the uh, the proposal also encapsulates that we will not be working with this sort of pruning anymore. Instead, we will prune up to a certain height um, and everything below that height will be pruned. Um, so I do invite you, if you do have opposition to that or do have feedback to that, I do invite you to go comment on the ADR. I'm gonna grab the link real quick. There is the link. Here is the link in the chat. And Amazing. Um, then, of course, with the key refactor, there is the open question about IVL migration. Um, maybe, so I believe uh, Crypto.com did some thinking on this. Um, John is also thinking through this. Uh, Adu, do you want to speak on this? On um, Or if Yihang is here? Uh, sorry, I think I missed some of the context in this topic i think huang yi knows most of the idea okay. but he's not uh, uh he's not pre presenting so i think uh yeah he said uh, he would uh, attend this meeting but i think uh, he should it's have too late. Yeah. yeah maybe like the meeting i think yeah yeah okay awesome so um from my understanding in chat um in slack there is a concern that archive nodes could potentially take days or weeks to migrate to the new key design um, because of the suboptimal design of the previous store. Um, and so there is multiple um, discussions happening that on different ways to do it. Um, one proposal from Dave was that uh, you have multiple logical databases, meaning that you have a database for let's say block one to 100,000, 100,000 to 200,000, you have a different database. Um, and so in this sense, then they, you could potentially make it faster. Um, okay. 
Um, and if you have any thoughts towards the migration, um, definitely validator nodes um, or uh, validator nodes will be definitely a lot faster. Prune nodes will be a lot faster. But if you have any thoughts towards it, please uh, leave, a, leave a comment in the ADR because we're going to start working towards a migration path for existing nodes. Does anyone have any questions there? So part of the storage discussion that was brought up was also the state size of on-disk storage is getting too much to handle. Um, and Cosmos has definitely been riddled with storage issues from the beginning. And right now we are working on solving it. So one potential solution um, that definitely node operators could decide to do is use a new feature um, called state streaming. And what this does is it sends key value updates. So um, the key and the value and various other information out to an external source. Um, the current implementation writes it to a file. And then the job of the node operator or chain would be to write a consumer that consumes the files and sends them out to a different location. Um, there is work from Providence as well to um, do some minor do a, a minor refactor of the API, but also introduce a plugin based system um, that uses HashiCorp Go plugins in order to allow the node to stream out to via uh, through a plugin to an external source provided by the node operator. Um, so this is a secondary option that can alleviate the need to run archive nodes with huge databases because as we all know, as the database grows in, cos in the Cosmos stack, the database gets slower because we don't properly store things. We don't use proper store keys. Um, any, any questions here? I feel like I'm talking to myself a bit. <laughs> any, any other, anything? Anyone want to say something? <laughs> Do we have no. a, a timeline for when we think this could land in an SDK update? Um, so it's actually already uh, backported to 044, 045, 046. It's going to be in 047. Um, Yihang made some changes that uh, because it was observing too many writes, it was observing writes also to the cache layer, um, but we only actually want writes on commit. And so he modified the, uh, modified the code and that code is been sitting at the SDK teams moving a bit faster the past two weeks. And so his PR has just been sitting waiting to be merged. Um, and then we're going to backport that. And so you should be able to use it on all versions um, of the SDK um, with various chains. Uh, I have one slightly different question. Yeah. So if you are talking about like rewriting the whole database, um, like what? I mean, it, it seems like the this whole work is already taking a lot of time. Um, like, was there like any analysis to check? So, okay, two things. Um, there is this uh, Cosm Wasm SDK being implemented. They decided to not use IEVL. Um, they use some other storage from. Um, I'm not sure yeah, which one. They now. use they use Merck, which is also an IVL tree. Uh, right. Um, Okay, I don't know details, but uh, my question is like, if we like, consider like really writing the whole database and all the, like the different things, was there like any research to use basically just different underlying storage? What do you mean by different underlying storage? Like this uh, Merck, for example. Yeah, I, I think once once we get to that point right now, the, the informal team is still specking out the current design. And so um, and and so the idea is like uh, once everything's specked out, then we're able to refactor the entire store layer with an understanding of what it's doing right now, because um, the problem was we didn't really actually understand um, what the store layer, what the storage layer was doing. 
Um, there's a lot of like concurrency patterns that we don't know if are safe, if we need locking or um, if we don't need locking. And so the idea was like, let's first figure this out and then work on the refactor. I do think there, I mean, like very, a lot of, I think ADR 44, we will end up adopting, we'll end up adopting like, um, I think a um, deterministic tree that doesn't do things like rotate, like the AVL tree could be very beneficial because um, you could paralyze rights um, without um, the assumption that the tree will um, be non-deterministic when it reorders itself, um, when it rebalances itself. So there is a lot of like thought going into it. It's just like we haven't really had the time to like do research because we're still identifying issues of the current storage layer. Uh, two different things, yes. One is this IDR40, what we did before, related to uh, basically like both, yes, changing the interaction, by changing the concept of how the SDK store is um, supposed to work. And the second thing is the underlying storage, yes. So currently this is the IAVL. Yes. So I was like asking only about like the second part. Uh, okay. Since we are like adding all these you know, different layers of optimizations, changing the key store model, uh, changing the uh, yeah, changing the, you know like write patterns, it, like all of this is in IAVL. So I'm yeah. just wondering, yes, like if there is another package who just solves that without like like you know we could technically use this the same um if you if you are planning to rewrite the whole database we could technically use the same um sdk store and just use the um different underlying store instead of ideal yeah and I, this is definitely the goal we want to be able um so right now we're working on um spinning the store package out into its own go mod um, there's a couple of PRs that I've submitted that like uh, reduce the dependency graph um, on uh, on uh, from SDK onto store uh, from store onto SDK. Sorry, and the idea is that um, the store package can be iterated on a lot faster and used um, and not have to like be part of like the whole SDK release. Um, so there's a, there's work being done there, and I think that will allow us to do further experimentation and research on various trees. I don't think. From my knowledge, um, I haven't spent too much time, but um, the reason why we use like the IVL tree is um, because we it has uh, native iteration on it, and um, and we use iteration quite heavily in the SDK, and so there isn't a package that or there isn't a package that I know in Golang that supports the same semantics. Well, every tree has native iteration. From my from my understanding, um, I talked about we talked about this like uh, I talked to someone about this like years ago, um, and I can't remember exactly. But um, like I, like the problem is IVL is not only a tree right now. It's like it does very many things because we we separate the con we don't separate the concerns of what the tree does versus what um, the the store layer does. And so it's like, if we were to switch IVL, we need to like recreate all that extra logic, like snapshotting and everything like this, but it's unclear. Like SMT doesn't support snapshotting. So it's like, if we migrated to SMT, it wouldn't support snapshotting. It doesn't support batch writing and, and these various features that make the IVL um, usable in the SDK. Right. Yeah, yeah, so you're right. I mean, there is this commit version, there is uh, like snapshot. I guess like some of this could be like easily ported. But again, like probably that's a lot of research. Um, I know I definitely, I definitely agree with you. Like this is something we want to explore. Um, it's like a matter of resources more so than anything. Um, SDK has very finite resources, and um, and so if you're willing to like hire another like five engineers for the SDK, then we're definitely happy to like accelerate it. But uh, we we don't have infinite resources. Right. I mean, like, my only concern is that if you are like, you know, planning to do like all of this rewrite, and probably that might touch even the IBC, yeah. So the state proof, uh, that would be like worth to like spend a little bit more time and do it correctly, like once rather than twice, 
and then I don't know next year. Yeah, I, I think it's um, from my understanding, like the key change can be backwards compatible. Like there's not a reason we need to change proofs. Maybe I don't know. Um, question on the migration path. Uh, will validators basically have to have twice the storage available? That, that is like one potential path. I think there's like multiple paths, I think for, and, and it's un, very, it's kind of unclear like which direction is being taken. Um, I think there, there may even be like a separate ADR only on migration, um, <laughs> just so we can really dive into it just because it is a fairly large migration. I mean, the, the, the simplest migration is basically state sync, um, yeah. but we can't we can tell everyone to state sync. <laughs> Someone has to migrate. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I mean, um, I mean, like the import and export API, uh, I believe, stays the right. same. And so okay. we, we can, if you export with the old key, uh, I can import it with the new key. Right, 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 right. That makes sense. Um, but yeah, no, it's, um, it's definitely something we need to explore. Um, and yeah, Robert, I definitely agree. Um, we, uh, I think what you're kind of describing is like technical cost analysis on like a rewrite versus a refactor or like, or, and stuff like that. And I think in Cosmos in general, uh, across the Cosmos stack, we haven't been good at this. Um, I've been trying to read up on it and, um, figure out a way we can do it in the SDK instead of just like constantly just doing whatever. Yeah, I mean, another concern is that, like, you know, if you do like the whole rewrite, uh, then it will break the archival notes, right? Like, and the historical queries. The, that's the migration. So the migration there is, I think there's like multiple ways, like there's also the path of like, we, you don't have to migrate previous state. You only have to migrate current state, mm -hmm. and you you're able to use old keys to get the old state so, and new keys for the new state. So there there are like multiple paths, but yeah, I, like archival nodes um, are the biggest concern here. Also, like for the IBC, I think there might be the pro no. I think it will be a problem because IBC have relies on this um, archival node. Specifically, yes, the relayers. Yeah, so no rollback relayers. They relay on um, archival node. Uh, relayers. If a relayer is relying on an archival node, I feel like that's because uh, all they need is two weeks storage. From my understanding, yeah, right, two weeks of historical data. Is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so that kind of archival, right? Not not the latest. Yeah, um, it's like full, it's full, it's a full node. Yeah. It's a default my point, format, yeah. My my point is that if we change the storage and the past version of the storage, then there might be problems with the relayers, yes, because then how do how will they prove um the messages? How do they sync? Right? I remember we had a problem with that. Um I mean, you can either migrate the two weeks. I don't think two weeks of blocks is, or state will be like that slow. Um, or we can have like um, a key system that like if you use like on startup, um, you basically mark the version, you check the latest version to see if it's the old key system, then you start using the new key system. Like there, I think there's multiple ways to like solve this. Um, yeah, but this is not the problem. The problem is that when you have a, an IBC method, and then you want to like prove it, um, like during the migration or whatever. So let's say you have an IBC method at version V or at version T, and then you migrate, uh, I don't know, T plus 100, or yeah, the T is a block number, right? Then a uh, relayer will be lost. Yeah, we'll basically not validate that. Um, yeah, something to look at. I, um, you want to comment that in the ADR? I'm not following the problem. I'm not seeing the problem. Um, 
may, may, I see Adi's in here. Maybe like you are understanding this. I didn't catch. No, uh, I didn't really understand. I was trying to follow, but I, I I'm getting a bit lost. Yeah. So relayer, relayer needs like the past you no know, past data, yeah, past versions. Yeah. They cross check the past versions. So if the past version will change, uh, then they will not be able to validate their Merkle proofs, what they have in the other chain. That's mm -hmm. typically about the validators, about the messages. Correct, yeah. You uh, need roughly two or three weeks of uh, historical block data index, uh, transaction hash indexes, uh, Merkle tree proofs, construction, and things like that. Yes, so exactly. So when I, let's say, migrate now, Mm -hmm. Then the relayer node will be lost because all the past data will be will change. Oh, I see. So you need to keep a, then you need to probably keep two sets of nodes: one that has the whole old historic, one that has the old uh, kind of legacy encoding of data. Is that is that what this is mm -hmm. about? Kind of how the data is stored, and then the new uh, switched version. Yeah. Is that what so you probably mean? then yes. So probably like that would answer like the other question that the nodes will have for some moment support the databases but if if, uh, if the if the root hash doesn't change meaning if the app hash is if the proof is the same as now then well, i don't i don't get how it breaks no but like it, I, i'm saying like it is i'm saying it's the same like what if it's i think it's the same and that's the idea like the state proofs no, don't change well, the key is changing, yes. So it must change. Like the tree will be different. The I from based on the ADR and talking to Dave, my understanding is like state proofs won't uh, don't have to break. It's like okay, we can then break. You them. To then you to okay. They need to like double check I mean, it. My understand my understanding is that uh, like the the host. Like, I think you. I the think you commented it, about this, and people said it's yeah. not an issue. Yeah, I was commenting about it, but I don't see like still I don't see uh, why it's not an issue. What is the scope of the migration? What does the mig migration actually change? Uh, it, it just like. You're migrating. You're basically calling Git on a key, and then you're changing the key, you're changing the key, and then just writing it back to disk. That's like one possible way. Yeah. Does it so change like, in any way the, the structure of uh, of how an ABCI query looks like into into the HTTP, you know, the request URL, or does no. it change the output of that? No, that that stays the same from my understanding. So okay. So, so my other, on the my wire, if on the wire nothing on, changes, and if in the proto files nothing changes, um, I am comfortable saying that this migration is transparent to relayers. I, I will need to double check because I, I definitely don't understand all the details. But proto files and a, you, basically you are binary. What goes on the what goes on the uh, on the TCP/IP connection between relayers? That that's what relayers care about. If it's transparent to that, it should be fine. So my understanding is that, like, how I remember it, reading it, so we are prefixing all the keys with the version. So that potentially changes the order of the keys, like, the not only the order of the keys, but in general the shape of the tree. So if there will be like different rotations after the migration, yes. So the hashes will change, and uh, Let's say if you had like a roof hash before the migration, yes, equal, I don't know, A, then after migration, it will be different. I don't think it should change the um, the structure of the tree. You're changing the, the key in like the underlying database. You're not changing actually the key. There's two different keys. One is the, the, tree, yeah. the tree key, and that remains the same. And it's the database like node key that's changing. Oh, OK. From my understanding, that uh, the storage level API should level, should not be changed, right? This is just changing the I will I will lose a key. 
Yeah, it's not so changing the, the tree oh, structure. That, uh, the, the real key is not changed. Yeah. It's just about oh, how okay, I see. fetch data from the IOL tree. So the storage now API should should be still compatible. Uh, mm -hmm. is this okay, I mean, this makes sense then. I think I also understand it better now. Yeah. So essentially, when we construct proofs through ABCI query, uh, and you request proof equals true, uh, you request the exact same path, correct? Yeah. Good. That's okay, then, I, then I think I understand. I think we should be fine then. Thanks, Robert, for pushing there. I, I understand it better actually now what uh, the whole discussion is about. Um, but but yeah, to to the earlier point, uh, Robert, I do agree. Like looking at other trees, this is something we want to do. Um, it's just more of a research topic than an engineering topic, and. Right now, we're, we're trying to do a lot of engineering topics um, to to move the SDK forward. Um, the next the next point of like the storage discussion is kind of like state bloat. Um, so we all know the the current state of the of a chain is really all the uh, all the all what the blockchain cares about, but the current state ends up growing a lot, going pretty fast. Um, um, the the current state ends up going pretty fast, and this has been an issue where some disks, um, some chains end up growing faster. I believe Providence mentioned something in Discord a couple months ago that they updated to a new version, and the state bloat grew a lot faster um, than before. Um, so this is also something that. Yeah, I think uh, we are facing this problem for a long time because uh, for chains with uh, UAM, uh, it is very easy to have a large amount of data and the, expl the state explosion is very, is very heavy. So uh, Huang Yi has some proposal, I think it's uh, something like uh, version DB. Uh, uh, I I don't know, uh, I don't know the whole con, the whole idea. But I think the basic concept is that, uh, uh, instead of store instead of store the, all the historical versions of data, we just uh, store the diff, so that uh, we could uh, rapidly, uh, restore, some versions on the fly, uh. I'm not sure if this, if this is the original idea of Huang Yi, but uh, uh, sorry that uh, Huang Yi isn't here. Yeah. All good, all good. Yeah, I, I definitely think it is something that um, many chains are running into. Um, and now is kind of like after we get through the key, um, key factor change, then I think diving into what modules are actually inflating the, the state the fastest or unnecessarily and then diving into those modules and trying to clean up state um, and identifying why it's happening in the first place um, is do our other chains i know providence and crypt.com um, are other chains experiencing a faster growth than what they may have as throughput on their chain Now give me a sec, I'll take a look at my graphs. Oh, let me follow up, rather. <laughs> uh, awesome, awesome. Um, yeah, it's definitely would be good to better understand um, that. Um, the last point I wanted to touch on is um, the larger discussion of databases. So currently, as we all know, um, the Cosmos SDK and Tendermint support like six databases um, that are, and none of them are optimized for our use case. We kind of use them at their default setting. Um, and Tendermint is also diving into the story of a single database and what does that look like? 
Um, I believe they're going to work on that in the new year. Um, and for that reason, we also created our own fork of TMDB. Um, it's plain and simple, Cosmos DB. We've already removed um, a couple DBs um, just to make it simpler. Um, I believe we removed Badger and Bolt right now. Um, and uh, potentially will do others in the future in order to um, just reduce and really focus on a couple dbs instead of um, trying to support five six um, different databases um, from here does anyone have like preferences on which dbs um, we keep and which we remove So if we removed all the DBs, we'd be safe, right? You can do wrong things if you remove everything. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, all of them. Go level DB. Uh, so, okay, so I think uh, Providence uh, Ida is saying, that, did I say that? I'm hoping I said the name right. Um, I think you guys might be the only ones that I know using C level DB um, actively. Um, but yes, a ideally a go native DB. Um, oh, you have app hash. Of hash mismatches in the past with go level DB. That's interesting. I actually haven't encountered that myself. Is that, do you know which hashes? Um, is it like an app hash or like a last result hash or is it like a more low level hash? Derek Anderson, Derek Adams might be able to say more. Is there a Derek here? Oh, it's app hash issues, mismatches. Oh, interesting. Because of the underlying DB. Interesting. Kind of curious on uh, that, so I may ping you later on that. Um, but yeah, kind of uh, in the future, it'd be optimal to go to either a single database or uh, go down to at least two um, so we can really hone in on our use case um, of how we use databases just because we can definitely, we're, diff we're leaving a lot of performance on the table by not optimizing our use case uh, for our use case. And those were the main things I had in my mind to discuss. Um, now I'd like to open the floor for anyone to ask questions um, or um, yeah, ask questions or just kind of like uh, propose something, some feature they want in the SDK and we can kind of discuss it here. Uh, talking about uh, reducing the DB size, I would like to introduce a PR from Huang Yi, yeah. That is to uh, integrate state streaming, state state streaming to store playing historical states. Yeah, I think it uh, it has very significant uh, reduce on the DB size. Yeah. Which which peer is this? Uh, I posted it in the chat. It's one. Interesting. Okay. Even I commented on it. Yeah, I remember that uh, Huang Yi experimented this with the Carlos and uh, it works great. Uh, there is a discussion, I, I remember. So, um, uh, the DB size issue is always one of the biggest issues for uh, UAM machines. So, I think uh, 
this is also one of the most uh, important topics for us. Yeah, uh, maybe you could. Uh, 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 it's a pity that Huang Yi is not here, but I think uh, maybe he could share something in the next meeting or in or in Cosmos SDK discussion. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Um... I agree with such an issue. Basically, anything to save the hard drives of the node operators and validators, um, reducing the need to uh, state sync every couple of days, every couple of weeks, um, depending on the chain you were on. Um, um, amazing. Anything else from anyone? This is definitely something we should um, discuss more greatly, and definitely on the next call, I'd love to once we move the call an hour earlier um, to have uh, Ihan talk about the issue and the experiments he's been running. Oh, thank you. Anything else anyone would like to discuss? There is another one that I, need, I, I would like to discuss. Yeah, it's about the wetting, West Writing module, yeah. Uh, because we lo uh, uh, we mentioned that we would like to tracking the total number of locked coins, but uh, uh, the Western coins is very strange because it changes where the time. So if we want to real, if we really want to keep tracking the total number of West of locked coins, we have to calculate uh, the unwasted part of the total coins at every block. So it's, uh, of course, it's not efficient, but uh, uh, but uh, if we, if we uh, calculate uh, this number on our demand, uh, this would also require um uh, uh, require iterating the Western accounts which might uh, break the the, the, the constant with with a, might uh, break this state machine yeah I, but i'm not sure so any advice or suggestion is there Is, is there a need to like store the updated vesting tracking each time or is it all i mean it's it's inefficient to basically like when someone queries total supply we have to iterate all the vesting accounts um so it's like either we do it on the query or we do it on every block from my understanding is that right uh yeah yeah, that's point. Yeah. <sighs> mm. part, part of me, the the lesser of two evils in my head is like doing it on the query. So we're not blocking, so we're not using like the state machine time, but would, um, would love to hear from like Aaron and um, other people on on this as well. You're specifically asking about, um, sorry, what is the specific question for me? Uh, 
as Adu has like the PR um, on yeah, testing tracking. That. Yeah. Um, and it's like, what is the optimal way of doing it? Because it's like we, um, the current design is like we recalculate it, we recalculate the vesting total vesting tokens every on every block. Yeah. No, I mean that's probably not optimal because it could be a huge iteration. Um, or we do it like on the query. I think query is better, but um, it's still inefficient. Yeah, if it's on the query, then it only needs to be run on that node that needs it. Yeah. Whereas if it's, I mean, it shouldn't be part of the state machine if it's not needed inside the state machine. Do you need it? Do you need the calculation within the state machine? How do? Mm. No, I think uh, calculate, calculating this on demand is better. Uh, if there are a lot of too many uh, Western accounts, yeah. Uh, like Aaron said that uh, if we update this number at every block, this, this would uh, cost money. Uh, this would involve many machines, but uh, if we do it on the query, this would only uh, cost. Uh, uh, this would only cost one state machine. Yeah, I, I agree. I totally agree. So uh, maybe we could just uh, calculate this this number on demand. You could you could also introduce a caching layer in front of that node if it was going to be queried often. Um, I mean, like if it was going to be used in, in an app where at front end where people were seeing that regularly. Uh, one other thing you can do that, it, if I'm understanding the problem correctly, is uh, instead of just maintaining like a single sum of the whole uh, system, uh, uh, shard it out and kind of split the difference so that an update, uh, each shard only covers a you know kind of a fractional subset, and uh, the uh, and a query would have to uh, sum up all shards, but you know each one kind of splits the the difference. Mm. You mean that uh, we should uh, split the query to query many state machines so that each state machine could do part of the job and we sum it up? Yeah, something like that. It would be interesting to see, like, on average, how many vesting accounts actually exist on a chain. Because I think it's like if we're talking about like 100 or like 500, potentially the iteration is like on the query on a single state machine is fine. If it's like in the thousands um, or tens of thousands, then I could definitely see us needing a more complex solution. Yeah, I think uh, like Aaron said that uh, we could use offline uh, state offline data. For example, we could use uh, uh, we could use the offline database to calculate this, but uh, uh, but some but uh, the state machine itself needs this need this this data sometimes. So. Uh, uh, I mean, some some other modules may need this data for some reason. So I think, uh, yeah, so, maybe. Like, so I, 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 um, go go like ahead. Just maybe one thing to, to, to throw out there, and this is not anything we can do right away, but um, there have been over the years discussions of redesigning the way vesting works because the current system is suboptimal. Um, for a number of reasons, w one of those being that you can only um, instantiate vesting accounts once for a given accounts, and then in cases where there are actually, you know, real world cases that um, people have where they need to use vesting accounts regularly for the same people. Um, so, like one proposal that had come about in the ideas around refactoring vesting was that, like, instead of the vesting just continuously being like a continuous thing. Um, it could be a thing where by default um, the coins are locked unless a user actually makes a transaction. Um, so you could basically keep a balance of 
of coins that are unlocked and coins that are locked, and that like just by changing the semantics, the calculation becomes easier. Um, and there are ways that that may be an easy way to manage vesting accounts, just generally, um, if we were going to expand that concept. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, this, this involves refactoring the vesting module, even changing most of the semantics. Uh, yeah, totally. Um, but it is, you know, I think it does point to like, there is an issue, I think, with just the way vesting works now. Not that we can change this immediately, but um, definitely, definitely agree. Um, uh, I could, I could try in this PR. So, um, uh, well, you, you should, you should. No, um, no, 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 no. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, I think in this PR probably. I mean, probably it makes sense to do it on demand. And the optimization that you have is that you know. Rather than iterating over all accounts in state, you know which are the ones that have vesting accounts. Um, you could even narrow that down even more by by storing a pair of an account and a denom, so that if you want to do the balance, if you want to do the supply of a given denom, um, maybe that's not too common. But there's ways you could maybe just make that query more efficient. And and you know then what I was saying is an optimization is just put like an HTTP caching layer in front of your full node that's doing this and then it could be relatively low impact to serve this up on http server uh okay thanks for your advice i think uh yeah so i guess the the move forward on that pr would be um to do the iteration at the query layer um, I think part of your PR is also storing, um, uh, providing a store key to vesting in order to store the vested accounts separate from the normal accounts, um, and then we do the iteration at the on demand. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Awesome. We do have three minutes. Other, do you have something else you want to discuss in the, in the last three minutes? Uh, thank you. That's it. Uh, that's all yeah. okay amazing amazing Th thank you thank you for bringing that up and uh yes thank you for bringing that pr it's definitely been it's been sitting around for a while so i apologize for that um but perfect uh thanks everyone for joining and see you in two weeks if uh, you're not able to attend the next one then uh happy holidays enjoy hopefully you're getting snowed in somewhere <laughs>